away from her own. Better to be here, right, than not be here. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
um, but she did make them aware that she prepared the installment agreement and that it was here and she did make them aware that his wife is the one that has to sign the installment agreement. So he does know that it is all prepped, and but he also knows that he has until August 31st. Yeah, How many properties uh, will end up in the foreclosure sale? Well, if nobody else comes in and pays, 62. <laughs> but it all depends on the people that we granted the extensions to. If mm -hmm. they hold through, um, I'm not sure off the top of my head the number of people that, that totaled. Mm -hmm. um, so I could look into that and I could let you know. But on my list, I think, that, uh, I think it's going to be about 30-something. Closer to 40. Yeah, my list, I think I got, originally I had 18 or 20, and I think about half of those were men. So, mm -hmm. so there's still about 10 or 12 left on my list that, gave, that I gave extensions. I think that if I remember correctly, it was going to be close to 40 that would actually be going to the auction, 38 or 40. Mm -hmm. Which is about typical. That's right, about average. Yeah. I, I know we've said it before, but it was. Uh, uh, the most efficient streamlined process I've seen. Uh, so Claudia and Jim uh, did a great job and obviously Lexi, Lexi and uh, Mike uh, just it was very smooth. So. And again uh, Lexi, Claudia and Mike and Ron Conover were the ones that really pushed for this. As I said Claudia was the backbone as I also said, that makes me spineless, but... <laughs> <laughs> All right, do you have anything on uh, plastic bags? The plastic bags, I just wanted to get it back on our, on our radar because where it ended was that we had the public comment session, not, a, not an official public hearing, but public comments, and you know, we had a lot of people who came in support, especially the... the um, Oh, their name is escaping me right now, but the coalition that came and brought us the initial proposal. Tri-County. Tri-County. Thank you. Um, and then there were some people that were talking about, you know, not wanting the ban because they really wanted to have a choice. So I've been doing a lot of thinking, and I know NISAC is on the state task force, and NISAC just did a uh, Facebook Live town hall session, which I did not get a chance to attend, but I'm hoping I can go back and, I will go back and um, watch it. It's is, is still out there yeah so just to get an idea of what what is happening and if anything is happening or if we should try to bring this back through our our environmental concerns committee to come up with a solution that our residents would be more um, accepting of thank you mr chairman i did um, watch the nysac facebook town hall meeting and it looks like nysac is taking an active role mm -hmm. in putting forth legislation, helping craft it uh, at, the, at the state level. So perhaps our best avenue was to help support the NICE Act effort okay. with very broad general. So take a look what Eden yeah. Quarrel says. What, what is the nature of their... In their I mean, what are they... Um, yeah, it would be that there is going to be a, a regulation on single-use plastic bags statewide. They seem not to be, they seem to be splitting the difference or something. Like it, the, the fact is that they, statewide, the single-use plastic bags puts a lot of stress on municipal resources, you know, landfills, cleanings, things like that. So that's right. where they're coming from. Okay. Peter? So are they, I'm sorry. Okay. Did Madison County, did they, do you know, have any idea what they did? The last time I checked, after they said they were having their public hearing, they had extended their public hearing. Okay. So they hadn't yet formalized anything, finalized anything. When, when we had that public meeting, it was, uh, I think it was Mr. Harvey that got up and uh, he, he said this two or three times, uh, and uh, I didn't say it at the time, but, uh, the, he, but his, his point was that since we are a burned county, uh, we shouldn't be very concerned about plastic bags. And 
but for for every solution there's a there's a counter issue that's involved in these things and, and, and that is uh, when we burn plastic mm -hmm. what what's the end result of that stuff that goes up into the mm -hmm. in, into the airwaves okay and it uh, if you Google it and all of a sudden you start coming up with holy mackerel these, these are potentially carcinogens that are now going up so so we're a burn county but is that good maybe not the wind blows. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Hope it's going south, huh? From your perspective. Huh? <laughs> Actually, speaking of wind, when you put, like, uh, I put my recyclables into the recycle bin, and I'll use a plastic bag to throw it in. What that does is it makes it really hard for the machinery to operate, and it gums up the works. You actually should, and I think it says right on the container, not to put the plastic bags into it. So I read up on the machinery, and they said it just, because it's so light, it goes all over the place, and it, they have to stop and pull the stuff out, and so it's, it's because of the very lightness, the thinness of it that makes it such a problem. Yeah, I, I think the reality is that this is coming, maybe it's a year away, maybe it's two, maybe it's five, don't know, but uh, we, we as human beings just we change we change the way we kind of we, we reorient our lifestyle so we we change change is hard and uh, it uh, but uh, it uh, seems as if the, the younger people are the more agreeable they are willing to, to change <laughs> yeah Matt uh, thanks Mr. Chairman um, one thing that we haven't really discussed, and I think it comes under environmental concerns, are the invasive species. That was something that was under the previous right. committee, and um, you know, it's, it's something that's equally as important, if not uh, affecting our yeah, day much. right now, especially the towns that have lakes and um, forests. Um, you know, we've had a report of um, the woolly adelgid being found up on Prospect Mountain. We don't know where else it's at. Um, we've had instances of invasive aquatic invasive species being found on, um, you know, tr uh, boats that are being transported between lakes, even with our current program. Um, in some ways, we're even more vulnerable because we have the system set up and, you know, some people are under the impression that everything's good. And it's, uh, there's a lot of things that are heading our way and that are, are going to affect us financially. Right assessments. Um, I know in, in Oregon we're, I'm very concerned about um, staying on top of this. So if mm -hmm. we could maybe just, you know, continue on a path with that, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I, like I said, I think we've kind of Dennis, been uh, Supervisor Dickinson used to inform us of that quite a bit. Yeah. Um, I know he hasn't been at the last couple of meetings, so yeah. maybe we could, you know, broach him before the next meeting and see if he could share some of that with us. Well, I do. can do that. And we just had um, Wayne Lamoth and Dave Wick come to this committee and give a report about some of the stuff that they're doing yeah. for um, invasive species control and the grant issues. I should follow up with Wayne because I know there were some where maybe some towns needed assistance leading the grants and the county was willing to do that. Yeah. And I also know Bolton is working on some stuff with the Lake George Land Conservancy. Right. So maybe we can ask um, their land steward guy to come and talk to us. I think what, um, you know, and that, that's great. I mean, Lake George, we're looking at that as a Warren County impact, but there's actually a park-wide program that's being um, funded through the state that, that really, we've got to stay on top of this. Warren County's been the leader on this. And, um, you know, there's a lot of cooperation between entities, you know, the LGA, everybody, the mm -hmm. fund in Lake George, mm -hmm. along with them supporting park-wide, mm -hmm. and I think we need to look outside of Warren County and us continue to be leaders and, right. um, and keep this on the forefront because it's it's really, there's things coming that mm -hmm. we're unprotected right mm -hmm. now. One thing that um, I remember 20, 30 years ago was acid rain, <clears throat> and I, now I don't know what the, I mean there's a lot of things that sort of are forgotten and then brought back up. Um, maybe if we had a review of 
all the issues that we're, you know, that are coming in so that we don't, you know, so that we stay on top of all of it. Is that, do you know of anyone, Claudia, that can, a biologist or? Matthew, what you um, I do, uh, I probably could make a contact with Paul Smith College through their right. um, Adirondack Watershed Institute. Um, I have heard um, what's been going on with the acid rain and um, I'd rather them right. speak. I think they're doing a lot of studies on salt impacts right now throughout the park. Right. All of our water um, is being affected by salt use. And uh, so maybe I can... There's a... Um, there's a, not to take too much time, but... That's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. There's um, There was a documentary on the elk out west were being killed by bears, the, the foals or whatever you call them, and they couldn't figure out why it was happening, and what they found was it was a combination of global warming was driving the trees that the bears eat it was driving, it was killing off the lower ones, so it was driving them up higher. And at the same time, some people had thrown um, an invasive species into the lake. So the combination of those two things was causing this other problem. And <coughs> it, it to find to figure it out took a lot of resources. And um, I think. What concerns me is we need to not just focus on one thing, but on the whole matrix, and and that takes resources, and that takes basically governments. The only way to solve it, and if we aren't careful, um, we could get something getting away from us, which is sort of what. If you look at this documentary, that's what was going on, and if some, you know, like Dennis was talking about, if the you know, certain trees are killed off immediately, that could affect the tourism industry. So there's an economic and a ecological reason to be concerned about this stuff. And this is the place to discuss it. So, <laughs> anything else? If I can right. tack on to what Matt was saying here, along with the aquatic invasive species, you have the terrestrial aquatic terrestrial invasive species such as uh, purple loose stripe, Phragmites, and Japanese knotweed uh, being the three of the, the biggest that we face here in the county has been brought up at the town level. That, uh, people come to the town board meeting and say, what are you going to do about this patch? Some are in state right-of-ways, some are on private property, right. and so on. And as I drive around the county, I, I see that a lot of it can um, it also ties in, it seems to be, it would be good to have a mechanism, towns, counties, state, mm -hmm. to get together and have a, a program to really address these invasive species. And it needs to be coordinated at some point. As a town supervisor, as I call up Adirondack Park Invasive Plant Program, or if I call up New York State DOT, there's a lot of reaching out and there's no coordination. So here, here and there, and perhaps the, the county, through one of its um, agencies, can help spearhead a cooperative right. program. Well, one of my basic feelings about government is it tends to see the overall picture, and that's one of our, I mean, just out of common sense, but that's one of the things we really should be doing. Um, like what you're talking about, and um, I think we just need to be on top of it right from the start if we can. Um, do you want to look into it further, Craig, and see what the... I'm making a note right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, see Supervisor we're Thomas. At, at the uh, Soil Water Conservation District, uh, we've had discussions about a lake management. provide information to everybody so everybody knows what's going on and everybody's on the same page. So that's been discussed for a long time. 
Okay. Usually one of the biggest issues is the communication. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think, right. you know, and making sure that everybody gets the information and not just the group talking about it. Right. That's the hardest right. part. And, uh, and to inform what, you know, what can be done, what's out there. Right. And what's coming, and uh, my drill is. Yeah, our my feeling is our margin for error is probably thin, and we need to be proactive rather than reactive. So if we can, and this is you know we have the tax base and we have the money, and if we're at least you know getting the information that will help us to um, be as ahead of it as we possibly can. Claudia, did you say you have something? No, that's a great idea about Warren County Soil and Water. Yeah. Right. At least local, you know, for our county, that can help be a point, right. point of contact. Right. Well, I think we need to, uh, that's good, but we need to pull it all together in one spot at the county. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Anybody? Huh? I don't have anything. I'm done. Anybody else want to stay here all day? No, <laughs> motion to adjourn. Okay. <laughs> okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. You're welcome.